an ancient Buddhist pilgrimage. It encircles the island of Shikoku. The route is almost a thousand miles. Through the centuries, walking it has taken about two months. It still does. The path is essentially a circle. Pilgrims may begin at any point, but to complete the pilgrimage must return to their starting point, must complete the circuit. Along the way are temples. Eighty-eight of these are numbered in sequence. Several more bear no number, but are equally a part of the pilgrimage. Each of the temples is different, but number one is representative. At the sides of the gate, guardian deities protect the temple. When pilgrims pass through the gate of their first temple, they commit themselves to the pilgrimage. Their white robes signify a willingness to meet death should it overtake them along the way. Purification. The pagoda, a powerful ritual symbol. The main hall. Light. and of incense, pledges of dedication, from the main hall, Pilgrims turn to the chapel enshrining Kobo Daishi, for it is faith in this great saint which impels them to make this pilgrimage. Kobo Daishi is a pilgrim. He lived from 774 to 835. He was great as a religious philosopher, poet, artist, social worker, civil engineer. He founded the Shingon sect of Japanese Buddhism, but the pilgrimage is non-sectarian. It is inspired by deep faith, not so much in the master that he was, as in the savior he has become over the centuries. A deity, a miracle worker with the power to cure sickness, to make the blind see. This prayer repeats the word for eyes. To heal the crippled. grant easy birth to women suffering a difficult pregnancy. A temple is a complex of several buildings, several altars, each dedicated to a different deity who represents one aspect of the Buddha nature, as Kanon represents compassion. Or Yakushi, the power of healing. After they worship, pilgrims seek out the priest and ask that the albums they carry be inscribed to testify that they came here. The album will be cherished.
Temple number one has a shop where the accoutrements are sold. Robe, surplus, papers of dedication and a case to carry them in. Album. Hat. And most important, staff. For the staff symbolizes the Daishi. It embodies his presence. It is the central tenet of the pilgrimage that the Daishi travels always with the pilgrim, to some literally, to others in spirit. The motto of the pilgrimage is Dogyo Ninin. We two, pilgrims together, the Daishi and I. These words lie at the heart of the pilgrimage. Many of the pilgrimage temples offer overnight accommodations. At dawn, a summons to worship. This is one heck of a trek, and you can see way over there the land. And he walked along the coast. Point, he must have wondered over the to help a pilgrim on hours, way. possibly days, what these he contemplated and thought about the same days every these year three from Wakayama figures here across the inland sea. They give tangerines they have grown and money they have collected. Suttai is sometimes the planned activity of a group sometimes the spontaneous act of an individual. In either case, it is a way of participating in the pilgrimage. In return, the pilgrim gives a paper of dedication. Of course, the temples are important to pilgrims. They are goals to achieve along the way. They are places of worship and prayer. Priests provide counsel to those who are troubled. But visits to the temples do not constitute the pilgrimage, they merely punctuate it. The pilgrimage is an ascetic exercise for the layman. Its value lies in the physical, mental, and spiritual effort the pilgrim must put forth, the physical, mental, and spiritual rewards which accrue. It is true 
that nowadays most pilgrims go by bus. They are sincerely pious, but riding a bus is not ascetic exercise. And so the central meaning of the pilgrimage, as it has existed through the centuries, eludes them. It is believed that the pilgrimage path follows a course which the Daishi trod as a young man, a wandering ascetic driven to search for the essence of Buddhism. He was born on this island of Shikoku at a place now marked for the 75th temple. His family was of the aristocracy. When he was 15, he was sent to the capital so that his uncle could tutor him. At 17, he entered the country's only university, where sons of the aristocracy were trained for government service. But this career was not for him. He converted to Buddhism, dropped out of the university. For the next 12 years or so, he alternated study at the temples near the capital with periods of arduous austerity in the mountains. He returned often to the peaks of his home island. In later writings, he described an ascetic surely much like himself. He brushed aside the snow to sleep using his arms for a pillow. The blue sky was a sailing of his hut, and the clouds hanging over the mountains were his curtains. In summer, he delighted in the gentle breezes, but in winter, he watched the fire with his neck drawn into his shoulders. If he had enough horse chestnuts and bitter vegetable to last 10 days, he was lucky. But his deep-rooted will could not be taken away from him. At Cape Moroto, the tip of a peninsula jutting into the Pacific, he broke through to enlightenment. went to China, studied there with the master, inherited his mantle. After his return came the great years, friend of the emperor, acknowledged master. He founded the first school open to all students without regard to their social or economic status. He founded Koyasan, his monastic center in the mountains, for he never stopped believing that meditation should be practiced in high mountains, in deep forests. Here he lies buried. Pilgrims follow a path trod by the Daishi, with the Daishi at their side. Their bells hung from the waist can be heard even from a distance. Stone markers along the way guide and reassure.
Some of the temples have an altar for the fire service called Goma. significance of fire is much the same in most religions. It burns away the sins of man. Thank <laughs> you. 
goma at another temple